What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. So in today's video, we're gonna show you how to restore moldy black trim. So guys, we're working on our Sequoia and I actually wanted to show you guys how we restored this rubber trim on this Toyota Tundra. Now, it's uh, the Tundra is a 2005, my Sequoia is a 2006. So essentially, same components, same parts, and the rubber trim is the same. It molds, it mildews over time because it's so porous and you have to keep up on it. You have to make sure to put protectants on it every single time you wash or detail the vehicle. Otherwise, it's going to dry out. And if you're in an area where you're under trees, then mold and mildew will build up on the rubber trim as well. So I'm gonna show you guys how to restore that. Now the 2005 Tundra that we did, if you wanna check out that video, click up in the box. I actually deleted the folder where I had the footage. I know, I know, it annoyed me too. But the good thing is, I did the same thing to my Sequoia. So I'm gonna show you the methods that we use to do this. Now, this can be risky, so do this at your own risk, but if you're a detailer, whether mobile or shop-based, doesn't matter. You may have your own way of dealing with this type of trim. Let me know down below how you deal with it. This is how we deal with it. Um, it is going to take some abrasives. So what we're going to use is either steel wool or this green scuffy pad. Now I know you're gonna be thinking to yourself, that's really abrasive. It's not on the paint, it's on the rubber. Remember that. We're also gonna use a compound. You can use whatever compound you want. I'm choosing this one because I have it on hand and it's one of my favorites. So what we're gonna do is tape off this section here. We're going to basically use the compound as a lubricant and some abrasive and use the green scuffy first, see if that removes it, and then go to the steel wool and see which one works better to remove that moldy mildew. Now basically the idea behind this is we want to remove a layer of rubber. This is thick rubber on this door trim here. So you're removing just a tiny layer, just the outside layer, and you're basically scraping off the top layer of mildew and mold, the part that's gotten all oxidized and nasty. So basically you're stripping that off and then restoring the rubber. And we're gonna restore it with a ceramic coating. Now again, you can restore it with anything you want. I'm gonna choose the uh, Pinnacle Black Label Trim Restorer. So this stuff is pretty impressive. It is a dyed type of ceramic coating, so it is dyed black. So it will bring back some uh, richness to the rubber as well. This is great for all textured plastics on the exterior uh, also. So again, I'll have all the links to this stuff down below if you wanna try it for yourself. So let's get started by taping off this section. This is important because again, we're working with some pretty heavy abrasives. We do not want to risk harming the paint at all. So tape off the paint. The glass, I'm not so concerned about because this is quadruple zero fine steel wool. You can use it on the glass, of course, you know, use caution, don't just go crazy, but you can use it on the glass if you really, really need to. Same goes with that green scuffy mm -hmm. pad. You can use it on the glass, but I'm not worried in this instance because it's just so minor. It's such a, a small area that we're working with here on the glass. I'm not really that concerned about it. So with these areas taped off, the paint is really what you're concerned about. Make sure to get all of the edges protected. We're gonna go up around this curve here and this area here. The front passenger side door was already refinished. So let's go ahead and start with this. We're gonna start with the green scrubby pad first. Let's pull you in closer as you can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the compound on the green scuffy pad. You don't wanna work this stuff dry. You want to basically use the compound as a lubricant. Let's see how well this works. That worked really well. That did what we wanted it to do. Now, just to remove any compounding oils, I have just a little bottle of IPA, just a very simple alcohol mixture, and 
let it dry out and those are the results not bad so it actually removed that top layer of mold and the rubber actually feels nice and smooth again compared to this that's all rough and textured and oxidized this is nice fresh rubber so it's basically like removing a layer of rubber on the surface and revealing fresh rubber underneath. Not bad, right? Now I know what some people are gonna say, oh, you're ruining it, you're leaving lines in it, and blah, blah, blah. Guys, it's an old vehicle. Don't worry about that, don't overthink it. If you're a detailer and you see this type of stuff, there's no other way to remove it. Not that I have found, this is the only way. You have to abrade it, you have to remove the top layer of this oxidized moldy mildew. So, is it going to damage it? No, it's thick rubber. So let's do the rest of this and then we will lock it in with the coating. Remember, go in straight lines. Do not go up and down. Go with the grain of the rubber. The grain of the rubber is actually going from left to right. So work with that grain and you're not gonna have any problems. So guys, this method is really working for us. If you do have a different method, let me know down below. Or if you just use a different compound or a different type of scuffy pad, you know, whichever works for you. I'm finding that this works extremely well for us. It restores the rubber, makes it look amazing. And then we treat it, protect it with a ceramic coating, and it looks incredible. I'm also gonna use a little brush to get into the crevices here, just to remove the compounding residue. So it will get stuck in some crevices. And use junky towels for this. They're gonna get really, really gunked up. So don't use nice towels. Just use some junky towels. So guys, now the rubber is looking nice. I know, there's a few little spots here and there. I'm not too concerned about it. But the rubber now is looking nice and fresh. Let it dry out for a little bit. I sprayed it down with some APC, and I know, you probably wanna protect this too. Don't worry about this, this is my own vehicle. You can tape that up as you like. But look at how nice the rubber looks. Now I know, you're gonna say there's lines in it. That's okay. Actually, I've seen in brand new vehicles, the rubber trim has the same thing. It will have kind of like a grain to it. There's a little bit of mold still there, you can still see it, but again, overall effect. It looks so nice. You can tell this is like fresh rubber and this is the one that I've coated last, uh, actually a couple of weeks ago. This has been a couple of weeks that I restored this rubber. It looks so good. It looked like this. Look how terrible that looks. Yeah, that looks really bad. And here's what we refinished. This is on the driver's side, by the way. So I still have yet to redo this. It even has a weird dent in it. Notice the little rubber piece in here has been eaten away. It's just rotted away from going up and down and up and down, got dried, where over here, you know, it's still nice looking. So that's just from abrasion over time. It rots away, dries up, flakes away. Now, some may also want to just replace these. Can you replace them? Yeah, probably. You can just pop everything right off, buy a new one, put it back on. But, you know, you do what you want. If you want to spend money doing that, go right ahead. If you want to restore it and save money, then you choose what's the best option for you. But that's pretty awesome. From this moldy trim to nice, fresh, new looking trim. So after it's dried out a bit, I can still see there's a few more little areas that need a little bit more work. So what we're gonna do is this time pull out the steel wool and same thing, just use a compound and work in these small areas that you see 
that it needs a little bit more help. This is going to be more aggressive, so don't put too much pressure. And just work in straight lines. And you can kind of see it removing the layers. Again, if you're concerned about the glass, tape up the glass. I'm not because I've done this already and it hasn't harmed the glass. But you choose what you need to do. So that seemed to do a little bit better. Yeah, that actually worked really well. That, that worked better than the scuffy pad. So, if you just want to bypass the scuffy pad, if it's not bad, if it's really bad, use the steel wool, because that worked a lot better. Now, an alternate step, or another step that you can take, is actually to use a fine polish and a microfiber applicator and you can further refine the rubber. It'll take out or reduce a little bit of the lines that were left from the steel wool. And interestingly enough, it will actually gloss up the rubber a little bit as well, because you are kind of refining and polishing the rubber. So if that's the look that you want, then you can give that a try. And of course, it's probably the oils in it as well. I actually used Menzerna 3800 polish for this. You can see it really does make it look amazing. So after a couple of minutes, I had IPA'd it. And actually the bottom layer here, I need to do a little bit more polishing. After it dries out, after a couple of minutes, you'll notice what spots you missed. So the rubber is looking dramatically better. Not 100%, I'd say maybe 90% because there's some little areas here and there that are just not going to come out completely, but much better. So it's been IPA'd, it's been drying for a couple of minutes, let's protect it. So I'm gonna use the coating and just a little cut of a microfiber towel. Like a little two inch square is all you need and just go over the surface evenly and get every square inch. So guys, that's gonna do it for the trim. It's looking really, really good now. Almost perfect. Now granted, this is a 2006. To make the rubber on this look this good, it's actually pretty impressive. So if you are dealing with rubber like this on these types of vehicles or any other type of vehicle, if it is porous, uncoated rubber, if it's anything else, you're gonna run into trouble. Make sure that it is uncoated rubber. Um, you can try that scuffy pad, you can try the steel wool, try compounds, different polishes. It doesn't really matter as long as you are abrading that surface. You can even use 3000 grit wet sanding uh, paper and be able to abrade that off. Again, remember, tape off anything that you don't want to get damaged and just refinish the rubber. It's pretty impressive what you can do. So with the products that we used, nothing fancy. I'll have the links down below, but basically the quadruple zero fine steel wool 
any compound or polish of your choice. Just remember to use some sort of an IPA or panel wipe for the rubber. Uh, because it is porous, it's going to soak in um, the compounding and polishing oils. So IPA it, let it sit for like five minutes or so, let it dry out, and then you can go over it with any type of protection. I chose a coating because I want, for one, to see how long it lasts and to protect it as long as possible. But if you have your favorite type of trim protectant, now is the time to apply it once everything is nice and bare and restored. So guys, that's my method for restoring this type of rubber trim that was moldy and mildewy and nasty and faded out. It worked really, really well. So give it a shot if you are dealing with this type of rubber. Let me know down below what you use to restore this type of rubber, what works for you. So guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with others who may enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys later. Have a great week.